Welcome from wherever you may be watching us from. I want us to have this rest of the time to talk about dehydration. And I want us to be at a position to characterize dehydration in quite details so that we are able to understand what it is. Now, the first thing is to be able to understand what dehydration is. So dehydration simply refers to insufficient or absence of sufficient water in the body. So if the amount of water that the body requires for its functions reduces, then that is referred to as dehydration. Take note that anyone can suffer dehydration irrespective of the age, the sex, or even the race. Dehydration can be more dangerous in children as opposed to adults. It's also important to note that dehydration can be created as either mild, moderate, or even severe. Now, after having understood what dehydration is, let's then be able to classify dehydration. Therefore, dehydration has got three types. That is, there are three major types of dehydration. The first one is called the hypertonic dehydration. The second type is called hypotonic dehydration. And the third type is called the isotonic dehydration. In our next video, we'll then be able to characterize each and every of those type, types that we have highlighted above. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of dehydration. So in order for us to be able to understand the signs and symptoms of dehydration, let's then characterize the signs and symptoms according to age. So that we have number one, signs and symptoms of dehydration in children, and then signs and symptoms of dehydration in adults. So let's start with the first one. What are some of the signs and symptoms of dehydration in children. So of course the first sign of dehydration in, ch in children is called the dry mouth or even the dry tongue, generally the dry buccal cavity. The next sign is lack of tears, especially in children. Children are prone to crying and therefore when they do so we expect to see tears. So absence of the same signifies dehydration. A child can have sunken fontanelle. We can have no wet diapers and that which lasts for about three hours. Children should be wetting their diapers and if that does not happen for a period of three hours or more, then that can point out to dehydration. The next one is irritability, so the child can be irritable. The child can also present with fever, that is high body temperatures. Now, what are some of now the signs and symptoms of dehydration in adults? And the list is not conclusive, but points out some of the most common because Common things occur more commonly or most commonly. So what are some of the most common signs and symptoms of dehydration in adults? Number one is what we call the extreme thirst. So one becomes very thirsty. The next one is reduced urine output. Someone can develop fatigue or tiredness. We can then have low blood pressure that is on checking on the vital signs. Blood pressure can then be very low, what is referred to as hypotension. The next is called the rapid pulse. And one can also have 
increased respiratory rate. Someone can develop or develop convulsions, hallucinations, or even confusions. Dizziness is another sign and symptom. We can also have constipation. So one passes very hard stool. One can develop heat intolerance. And of course, there is decreased skin tagger for more than about five, sorry, three seconds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after having looked at signs and symptoms of dehydration in both children and adults, let's then move forward and have a look at some of the possible common causes of dehydration. Now, this, I will generalize them. The first cause of dehydration is diarrhea and vomiting. And actually, this is the leading cause of dehydration in children. The next cause is called pyrexia, or very high body temperatures, fever. The next one is called excessive sweating, and sometimes increased urination as seen in patients with diabetes mellitus, what is medically referred to as polyuria. The next cause of dehydration can be certain medications, for example, use of diuretics, e.g. frosamide or lasix, or even hydrochlorothiazide, or even tosamide. Those are just but a few examples of medications or drugs that can lead to dehydration. The next cause of dehydration is septicemia that can then even lead to septic shock. The last but not least cause of dehydration is burns. So of course this again will depend on the degree of burn. Let's move forward to then look at Possible complications. Suppose the aggression is not addressed in time. What are some of the possible complications that a patient can develop? The first complication is, of course, convulsions. So one can then go into scissors. The next complication of the aggression is called electrolyte imbalance. And one can develop hypotension that is very low blood pressure, one can develop shock, especially the hypovolumic shock. One can develop kidney failures. This can either be acute kidney failure that then graduates into chronic kidney failure. The next complication of dehydration is heat intolerance. And of course, the last but not least, cause of the sorry complication of dehydration is coma finally death can then occur if no proper intervention is taken into place within the shortest time possible ladies and gentlemen dehydration can kill and as you can see there are numerous causes of dehydration and therefore to manage dehydration it then needs a very quick response and of course this can only take place more effectively within a hospital setup. Should you come across any client suffering or developing features of dehydration that I have highlighted above, kindly make quick referral to the next nearby health facility. If you are watching us for the very first time, kindly subscribe. And until next time, it's goodbye from all of us.